What up guys, Maxki here bringing you a brand new Echo YouTube video. Welcome to the Ultimate Season 10 Echo Guide. If you want to learn how to play Echo, you want to learn his runes, his builds, his combos, everything about Echo, well you're in the right place. Last year I made a really long Echo Guide, you guys loved it, so I'm back at it again in Season 10. This time harder, better, faster, stronger, and also shorter. Don't blink! All in! Just my style. Alright guys, so let's quickly talk about the layout of the guide. Part 1 is the Echo intro. We're gonna talk about the best runes, the best builds, and the best summer spells for Echo. And then part 2 will be mechanics. We're gonna talk about animation cancels, all the combos, all the wall hops, and then my new favorite Echo mechanic. It's not really new, but I, I started using it recently, but it's a really cool mechanic. And then thirdly, we'll be in the in-game section where we talk about bans, laning versus different matchups, and then what to do out of lane. Don't worry, I'll have a link in the description or in the comment section to every section, so it'll be quick for you to navigate. But yeah, let's get into the Echo intro. All right, guys, so I'm gonna tell you my favorite room pages for Echo in season 10. Now, just a disclaimer that we don't know if Riot's gonna buff a rune or nerf a rune or introduce something new. So as of right now, these are, in my opinion, the best Echo rune pages. And they could obviously change, but as of right now, this is the best. Let's get right into it and I'll explain each rune and why we take it. So firstly, the best rune for Echo mid is obviously Electrocute. Always go that, unless they like buff something else, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Electrocute forever. And then here's where you could actually change. So you could go either Sudden Impact or Cheap Shot. If you're in a lane that you have to win, if you're in a lane where you have to win pre-6, like versus a Kastadin, versus any champion that goes like Rod of Ages, becomes tankier, if you have to kill a champion early game, you go Cheap Shot. Because Cheap Shot does a lot more damage than Sudden Impact does in the early game. But if you're versing a normal matchup where you're just gonna scale and just one shot later, or you don't, you don't even need to win early, it's not like you're not pressured. Because versus Kastadin, you're pressured. But if you're not pressured, you just go Sudden Impact. So usually it's gonna be Sudden Impact, but like I said, if you're versing somebody you have to beat early game, Cheap Shot is the way to go. It does more, it does true damage when you slow them with your Q. Then you're gonna go Eyeball Collection. They nerfed the Ghost Poro tricks with the Ward Trick and Swapping. So, well, they fixed the bug. So now Eyeball Collection is pretty much the best one. Every time you get a killer and assist, you get a stack for AP. And then down here, the best one is Ravenous Hunter. You could make an argument for Ingenious Hunter for more CDR on your active items and trinkets like Protobelt Zanyas. Or you can make an argument for more movement speed out of combat. Or you can make an argument for better CDR on your ultimate. But the reason why I go Ravenous Hunter is because everybody in the game has healing now because of Conquer, because of all these healing items. Healing is just OP. And if you're lacking healing, then you're, you're just going to get out healed in a fight. So I feel like healing is very important, especially Season 10 with the new Conquer. Got to compete with the healings. Anyway, now the secondary room page. You have two choices. You either go Inspiration or you go Sorcery. Let's talk about Inspiration first. I think Inspiration is the best. So what I do now, I go Futures Market and Time or Tonic. What? Futures Market? Yeah, so Futures Market, you don't know what Futures Market does. It lets you buy items that you can't buy. So if you just backed and you're missing like 200 gold for an item, well, you could buy that item because Futures Market gives you that 200 gold. Ba like, you get a free lead. So you, you're, bu you're buying items that you shouldn't be able to buy. So, especially early game, where if you get a kill or you back early, you could buy an extra item. Like you could buy a Doran's Real Dark Seal, or you could buy a Doran's Ring and like an Amplifying Tome, or you could buy two Amplifying Tomes. Or if you don't have enough for a revolver, boom, you buy a revolver. So it's really nice to give you extra money that you don't have and create leads that you don't actually have. But Future to Market creates those leads. So that's why I really like that. Helps you snowball a lot earlier in the game. And also if you're down, you can start building items that you couldn't afford. And then I go Time Warp Tonic now. Only go Time Warp Tonic if you're going Corrupting Potion. Corrupting Potion is basically my favorite start on Echo. It's really good. Not only does it give you like basically a mini heal when you click Time Warp Tonic, it gives you that movement speed. And that movement speed is really good for Echo early game. If you're not, if you don't want to go Futures Market, the second best rune I, rune I would do is Magical Footwork because it gives you free boots. Or if you hate free boots and you hate Futures Market, then you can honestly just go Biscuits with Time or Tonic. That's not even that bad either. Although it's not good to rely on Biscuits. My co I, was, I was coached by a 1100 LP EUS Challenger player and he said that I use Biscuits to fix my laning mistakes. So I stopped using Biscuits to become a better laner. 
but they could they could help you survive really bad matchups. So that's the electrocute inspiration rune tree. And if you want to go sorcery, I think it's the second best. Or it could be the first best, depending on what your personal preference is. I would usually always go Absolute Focus Gathering Storm for that pure AP scaling. But you could also do like Mana Flow Ban if you want mana. You could even do sometimes Transcendence if you want CDR and mana. Like these rune trees are really up to you. This one's pretty stable. The Electrocute tree is pretty, pretty much the same unless you want to switch Cheap Shot for early game leads. But for the most part, Sorcery can do whatever you want. But Inspiration, I recommend going Features Market, Time or Tonic. And that's what I do basically every game now. And lastly, if you're, you, you always go double AP in the mid lane. And then if, you're, if you don't know who you're facing, you go HP. If you're versing AD champion, you go armor, obviously. And if you go, I guess, uh, AP champion, you're going uh, magic resist. But if you don't know, if, if they're like flex picking a champion, then you go HP just in case. But yeah, that's the best room page variations that I love for Echo right now. I don't think anything else is as good. Precision, precision is not bad, resolve is not bad, but I feel like inspiration and sorcery are just by far the best for Echo. All right, guys, now that we learned the best room pages for Echo, let's talk about the best builds for Echo. And if, I, if you guys didn't know, you could go into the collection section of your client, into the items, and then you could actually make an item set for any champion or all champions that you want. So that way, when you go in game, you have this in your shop, so you never have to search for your items. And on top of that, you could assign slots for your items. So I always use my number two for corrupting potion. I always use number three for Proto Belt now, and I always use number one for Zanyas. So you, if you never want to be, in, you never want to be in a situation where your Zanyas is on four, and then you're about to die, and you're spamming one, but oh wait, Zanyas is on four, so you just die because your Zanyas is in the wrong spot. So that helps you never make that mistake. But anyway, let's talk about the best build for Echo, and I already have it laid out here for you. So firstly, you want to go Corrupting Potion. You usually always go Corrupting Potion. Obviously, it works really well with the room page we talked about, Time, uh, time or Tonic. Um, their Corrupting Potion just gives you movement speed, gives you a little bit extra damage per auto attack and you know your abilities, because it does like an extra, what, 10 damage or something over time or whatever. They did nerf it recently, but it's fine. Still does a little bit of damage. And then, um, yeah, it heals you, gives you mana, gives you that good sustain. There are times where you may just want to skip Corrupting Potion and go Doran's Ring. If you do that, then don't take Time or Tonic. Don't be one of those people that takes Time or Tonic with, without Corrupting Potion. Only take Tower Tonic with Corrupting Potion. But if you don't go uh, Corrupting Potion, I would only go Doran's Ring if you're versing a lane where you're never gonna go really oom. You're never gonna really be scared to get poked out. And the extra damage will be pretty useful for you to, for like a scuttle fight. Um, off the top of my head, I, I've seen like Scion mids before and stuff. Like maybe some type of tankier mid laner. Maybe even like Cho'Gath. Um, you could go Doran's Ring because you're not really scared to get poked out by them. And extra damage will actually help you. And this extra help, extra AP and extra passive for CSing is really nice. But anyway, usually you go Corrupting Potion, and then first back, I get Doran's Ring, Dark Seal, and maybe Boots if I have enough gold. And obviously, with Futures Market, you might have enough gold to buy all these items, honestly. So I would always buy basically these four items early game. Why would I go one, two, three early game items like Doran's Rain, Dark Seal, Crowding Potion? Because I feel like Echo is one of those champions that benefits really well from early game items because Echo is obviously not the best early. So when you build Doran's Rain, Dark Seal, Crowding Potion, Boots early, you get just a little bit better of an early game and helps you transition better into the mid game. And obviously the mana and the regen and maybe the snowballing on Dark Seal into a Medjai's will also be helpful. But anyway, the first item you always build is Proto Belt. Proto Belt is the number one item. And then after Proto Belt, if you didn't buy boots yet, buy tier one boots. Usually you don't want to buy tier two boots right after your first item. You kind of want to start buying Lich Bane. But if you have enough extra gold, just buy Stork boots usually. Unless they have super heavy CC, then obviously you buy Mertrez. If they have like Yasuo, buy Tabbies. And then after you buy your Proto Belt boots, you're going to go into Lich Bane. So the core items are literally Proto Belt, boots, Lich Bane, Death Cap. Always try to go Death Cap third, third item. Always, one, two, three. Always try to go Death Cap third item. There's no point of building Sanyas anymore. There's no point of building like a Voice Admiral Namacon. No, literally just build Death Cap third item and you will out damage all the other items. You'll out damage them through their MR and stuff. 
The enemy AD carry is not gonna have 3000 MR. Your job is to kill enemy AD carry, enemy mid laner. It doesn't matter. Death cap will out damage Void Staff, especially when you get Proto Belt, Lich Bane, Death Cap. That is your core three. Try to always build Proto Belt, Lich Bane, Death Cap. And then after that, it's up to you. If they have now that they have a lot of MR, you could go Void Staff. If they have like HP tanks like Volley Bear, Cho'Gath, go Leandris. Um, Marlon Namakon is a really bad item. The only time I ever even consider building it is after Death Cap now, if my team just won't build anti-healing, like if they have a Soraka and all that stuff. But for the most part, avoid Marl Namakon. It's pretty bad. It doesn't, it doesn't give you a lot of damage at all. Um, Banshees, if they have a lot of uh, strong AP champions like Syndra and stuff for late game because you get a one-shot. Zhonya's, Zhonya's is iffy. I would only build half of Zhonya's. I would buy Seekers, Seekers Arm Guard early game before you finish Proto Belt, versus like a Zed or like a Talon who's really good. But other than that, Zhonya's is not that useful. Especially if the enemy team has like a Caitlyn or something, you're just gonna Zhonya's into a trap and you're just gonna die. But for the most part, the best Echo build, like I said, is get early items, Proto Belt, Lich Bane, Death Cap, then basically anything else that you want. So yeah, that's the best Echo build. And now for the last part in part one of our Echo Guide, Echo Intro, we're talking about Echo Summoner spells. So obviously you always take Flash. Flash is obviously always, so let's not talk about that. What we're gonna talk about is Ignite versus TP. So there are distinct times where you wanna take Ignite, and there are distinct times where you wanna take TP. Though, disclaimer, you could always take Ignite, and you could always take TP, but there are certain matchups where Ignite could be better, and there are certain matchups where TP could be better. So I spoke to the best Echo in EUS, and he basically always takes TP, and he only sometimes takes Ignite depending on the matchup. So why would he? Why does he always take TP? Because TP, because Echo has a bad early game, right? We all know this. Echo just has a bad early game. It's 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 hard for Echo to take control of the lane early, especially if the enemy mid laner is playing a better champion or the enemy mid laner is just, just good. He knows how to beat Echo early game. So TP allows you to take some hits early, trade, and then back and then TP back to lane with an item advantage and all your potions back up, and then you could keep that guy in lane and maybe even kill him. So TP early game is basically for surviving the lane and getting an advantage in the lane that you shouldn't actually have, but you have TP, so you could just TP back to lane. And on top of that, TP is obviously really good for split pushing, because if you have TP, you could just split push the entire game, then TP to a fight. Or if you're bot lane or top lane or getting ganked or something, you could just TP there and make a TP play. So TP has really nice, global effects it's a good early game to save your lane and then it's good to mid to late game to you know save your bot lane or top lane or do a gank or you know tp to baron or whatever so it allows you to do a lot of things that's why tp is really good but there are times where ignite is better and that's where echo has to get a kill or echo can't get a kill without ignite what matchups are those when you're versing someone like cassidy we, we, we want to ban Kassadin, but if you're versing someone like Kassadin, you have to beat Kassadin pre-6. That's why you would take the rune page I showed you, a cheap shot to do more damage early game. And with Ignite early, you have to you have to have Ignite to have early kill pressure. So Ignite is a must versus champions like Kassadin. Ignite is also a must versus champions like Vladimir, Katarina, all the healing champions in mid lane that you need an extra edge, you know, to get a kill. I would even say that Ignite is good versus Yasuo because some champions like Yasuo are really hard to kill and you need that extra, extra damage from Ignite. So usually, to sum up, take TP if you want to have map impact and also outplay uh, the enemy mid laner early game with TP and you know buy an item, outplay him. So TP is good for the entire game, but Ignite is really important for matchups where you have to, have to, have to get a kill where if you don't get a kill, you're just gonna be outscaled and lose the game. Or without Ignite, you wouldn't be able to kill someone like, someone that heals. So that's the time where you take Ignite or TP. But like I said, you could take Ignite every game and you could take TP every game. So it's up to you, but there are benefits to either one. All right guys, let's start the mechanics section. We're gonna talk about animation cancels first. I'm gonna show you what it looks before then after. So this is EQ, right? So you click E, you E onto the target, then you click Q. But you can combine this. If you click Q right after you click E, you do a nice slide and a clean animation cancel. This is one of the staple echo combos. You can do the same thing with your W. So if you want to throw your W and E, well, instead of doing W, E, or slow E, W, you could do E, W, E, 
then right after E plus W and you do a nice slide as you saw right there. So basically you click E first and then you either click Q or W right after. So there's another animation uh, cancel that's not that popular, it's Q Proto Belt. You can just click Q and Proto Belt at the same time, so you just... It's not it's not that useful, but it's good to know. And then same thing with E Proto Belt, probably you'll never use this because you cancel Proto Belt animation and the Proto Belt dash, but it looks pretty nice. Now we have some flash cancel, so you could do E, f you don't want to do flash then E, it's slow. You want to do E, then flash, it's a lot faster and quicker, so the enemy can't react. Just, it's, not, it's not an animation cancel, but it's like a quick thing. But Q flash is pretty nice, so if you ever want to flash Q, well yeah, you can actually Q flash, because so, your Echo's Q starts before you flash. So it's really nice and smooth when you click Q then flash first, it just looks nice. Now let's talk about some main echo combos. This is the main echo combo. You're going to do E, Q, auto attack. So when you're in lane or any time, the most basic echo combo is E, Q, auto attack. And it's even better if you do EQ animation, obviously. Animation cancels. So you can do the same thing with, instead of EQ, you can do E, W, and then Q. So here we use the E, W animation cancel. Before we use EQ animation cancel, echo animation cancels make his combo a lot faster and stronger. So here we're going to do the proto belt combo. You're going to do EQ proto belt auto attack. So basically same thing, EQ auto attack, but we're adding a proto belt in the middle. And you can also do EQ auto attack proto belt, but you have to make sure to step backwards or you're going to miss. And I'll show you what happens if you click proto belt right after your E. So if you do EQ auto attack and then click proto belt, you're going to miss as you see right here. So when you want to, if you want a proto belt after your blink, make sure that you walk backwards. Now let's talk about some W mechanics you can click r outside of your w and it pops because your r has like an a imaginary like a well it's like an aoe radius you do the same thing if you're going through your w so yeah stun the target so here's a cool mechanic if you're ever in a situation where you want to stun somebody and then ult out for safety but then catch up to them you can throw your w get two stacks of your passive ult back and then your q gets your passive and you can catch right back up to them because you got the insane movement speed buff so it's really good for certain situations. Here's a really hard mechanic that you'll probably never do unless you get really lucky. This is where you redirect your Q, which are ultimate. It's actually pretty hard, but it, it usually happens by accident. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to know. And here's the best ever mechanic ever. Don't level up your R at level six. Hold it and confuse the enemy so they don't know where your R is. And then only level up your R instantly when you need it. So right here, Zareth has no clue I have my R, but I know where my R is because I'm tracking myself and boom, that's probably the best echo mechanic you have to learn. Literally, the best echo mechanic, do not level up your R at six. Follow your R with your own eyes. You know where your R is, you're used to echo, and just hold back onto the enemy champion or out of a situation, because they don't know where your R is. Now I'm just gonna go run through some wall hops. I'm gonna be messing up a little bit. I'm just speed running wall, uh, wall hops. Uh, the hardest wall hop is probably gonna be at the end, it's by wolves, but yeah. This is just me trying to show you guys all the walls you could hop through, so. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so now that you guys know everything about Echo's room pages, builds, his mechanics, animation cancels, wall hops, all that stuff, now let's prepare to go into the game with the bands. This is section three, the beginning of section three, the band section. So I divided the bands into tier, tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier ones are the perma bands. I, I currently right now perma ban Akali. Why? Because Akali is one of those champions that is just broken. The kid is broken. There's too much damage. She's really good into melee champions like Echo, and she scales super well because it's 1v9 a game. And there's not really much counterplay because she just has more damage and more burst than Echo at all points of the game. You could kill Akali like mid game with like a Proto Belt Lich Bane Death Cap, but it's gonna be a long time to get there, and she'll probably be super strong too in killing your team. It, but usually my teammates ban Akali, so if my teammates ban Akali, then I'm gonna ban Kassadin. Kassadin, your only chance to beat Kassadin is if you win pre-6, which is not always that easy, or you win the map, like you do a lot of ganks and stuff before Kassadin gets higher levels and gold. But then again, then again, you're just playing versus the clock versus Kassadin, he's, and he's still hard to kill, Rod of Ages and Tear and all that stuff. So Kassadin just the ultimate echo counter, I ban him. But if I don't have to ban Kassadin or Akali, then I go to Ryze, why? Because Ryze is really good into melee champions like Echo, and Ryze is Ryze, needs another rework. So those are my tier one bans, I will always ban those champions, but for some, if for some reason, I feel like the enemy team won't pick Ryze, Akali, or Kassadin, then my tier two bans are Fiora, Rumble, and Yasuo. So Yasuo is one of those matchups that's super hard because of Conquer, because of Crit, because Yasuo is just really strong, Windwall, all that stuff, his shield, really hard to kill. Usually when you're versing a Yasuo, it's up to the Yasuo to make a mistake, which kind of sucks, because if the Yasuo doesn't make any mistakes, it's just gonna outscale you and outfar farm you. And if Yasuo builds Wit's End, it's pretty much GG for you to kill him. So you're basically waiting for Yasuo to mess up to outplay him, which kind of sucks. Fiora is usually a top laner, and I would ban Fiora because Fiora is the ultimate echo counter outside of mid lane. She, like you, you can't fight her as echo. She'll parry your passive and then that's it, you're done, all your damage is gone. And then she'll just catch up to you because it's Fiora. And she's 1v9 is really hard right now. Lastly, would be in the tier two would be Rumble. I don't usually ban Rumble. I only, Rumble is played by a lot of like Smurfs and one tricks. Rumble is just one of those champions that's really good into melee champion so it's really hard to beat he's just annoying and his ultimate is insane and he just builds hp ap so he gets tankier and harder to kill so i, th I feel like his rumble is just a really good counter to echo but I he'd probably be my my least favorite uh ban out of these uh top six right now and then and tier three are there's just champions that i find annoying so leblanc is leblanc she's super oppressive super high damage a lot of mobility just, you could kill LeBlanc as Echo, that's why she's tier three. I don't, she's not really, you don't really need to ban her, but like a good LeBlanc is so annoying and so hard to fight. And then Zoe, I put Zoe in here because I think Zoe's a broken champion and she's super annoying to play against. Like I, I personally just get tilted when Zoe picks up my flash. It's a five minute cooldown, I don't know. But those are my bans that I would usually do. Usually you don't have to worry about it, tier two or tier three. Usually I just perma ban the champions in tier one. But if you don't like if you don't like any of these bans, you could always ban what's meta. Like if you want to, if I don't know if Hecarim's meta, you could ban Hecarim, you know, because broken champions are easier to play. But yeah, those are the bans. So now let's get into laning. All right, guys, let's talk about the laning part of the guide. I have some simple concepts on the screen that if you guys learn, your laning will improve a lot. I can't only really show you guys what to do in lane in one giant video because you know we have different champions to play against, different team comps, different situations. There's just so many variables to show. But if you guys watch my channel, you know that I do inside my Echo Mind videos is where I look at one of my ranked games and we analyze my best plays and my worst plays. And because it's season 10, I'll be doing a lot more matchup guides and a lot more inside my Echo Mind videos in the future alongside, you know, general stream highlights and stuff. So stay around for that. So I'll do a lot more laning in there. But for now, for this video, I wanna talk about general concepts for lane that you guys have to understand when you're playing Echo because the if you understand this, it'll improve your laning instantly if you understand this. So that being said, let's talk about when to push, when to freeze, and when to fight. The three concepts. So when to push is really important because all, all, a lot of Echo players just perma push, autopilot, that's wrong. So, there's only five reasons that Shuan Echo should ever push the wave, which means throwing cues at the wave. If you're not following these five reasons, that means you're autopiloting and you're not actually doing anything except just spamming cues. So number one is to roam. So every time you want to roam to like bot lane, top lane, or help your jungler, you always want to try to have the wave pushed or pushing to the enemy team. Why? 
because if you roam when the wave is at your tower or pushing to your tower, then you're gonna lose all that minions, all that CS, all that XP, and then that actually is hurting you. So if you get a kill bot lane, but you lost like two waves mid lane because you didn't push, then you basically just negated everything you did from the roam. Number two when to push is to ward. Warding is basically like roaming. So every time you want to get like a deep ward in the enemy jungler or just walk out of your lane to place a nice ward for vision, you want to do when the wave is pushed because like if the wave is pushing towards you and you go ward and you don't get back in time, then you're just losing minions. Number three is when you want to back. So obviously you can't always get the perfect back that you want, but the perfect back is when you're not going to lose any minions for that back, right? So usually you want to push the wave and then back. Usually you want to push a cannon wave and then back because cannon waves are, are the hardest for the enemy team to kill. So, but regardless, you want to push the wave so that by the time you get back to lane, you lose as least minions as possible. That's why you would push the wave if you wanted to back. Number four is diving. So say you're really far ahead or your jungler's coming or your, or your team is coming and then you want to kill enemy mid laner or whoever. You want to push the wave, obviously, because you want the minions to crash into the tower, so the, so you don't have to take tower aggro instantly, and then boom, you die the enemy mid laner. And then, then lastly, the last reason to, to push is to break a freeze. So say if you mess up uh, and the enemy mid laner freezes the wave, or naturally sometimes the, the freeze just happens if they do it correctly, you want to throw cues at the wave because you don't want to spend the entire laning phase on Echo at the enemy team's tower because then you just get perma ganked or if you fall behind then the enemy guys are just gonna just keep jumping on you. So in order to avoid this, you want the wave to crash the enemy tower so it resets. And that's when you would throw a Q at the enemy wave to push it and to let your minions crash into their tower to break any freeze. So those are the only five times you ever want to push an echo, which means throwing your Q at the wave. Any other time, well, any if you're, if, you're, if you're throwing your Q and you're not thinking about, am I gonna roam? Am I gonna ward? Am I gonna back? Am I gonna dive? Am I gonna, am I breaking a freeze? The enemy team is doing. If, if, if it's none of those five things, then you should not be throwing your Q at the wave with Echo in the early game. Which leads to the second part, when to freeze. So when you're not doing those five things, you should be trying to freeze the wave. And what does freezing mean? Freezing means that you keep the wave on your side of mid lane for like as long as possible. And how does that happen? That happens usually when the enemy wave is bigger than your wave and you don't let it crash. So crashing is when the, your wave, the enemy wave goes into your tower or your wave goes into the enemy tower and all the minions will eventually die because the tower can shoot all of them. So basically you freeze by stopping the enemy minions from crashing into your tower, but keeping them alive so that your minions start fighting enemy minions closer to your side of mid lane. And why is this so important? This helps prevent you from getting ganked because you're closer to your tower. Not only that, but it helps you to set up ganks with your jungler because the enemy mid laner is obviously pushed up to mid or even further than mid part of mid lane. And it also allows you to keep trading because you are you could trade, jump on the enemy mid laner, and then when you, you run back in one second, you're by your tower. So freezing allows you to do a lot of gank setups and a lot of... Um, you can actually deny minions too because you keep jumping on them and basically a lot of fighting So you always want to be freezing the wave or keeping the wave on your side of mid lane And how do you do that? You do that by not pushing AFK by throwing cues. Do not throw your cues. If you're not warming, if you're not roaming, warding, backing, diving Don't throw your cue at the wave The only time that you would ever throw a cue at a wave when you're not doing those five things is when the way enemy wave is huge and they'll kill all your minions and crash into the tower, so then you want to thin the wave. Th thinning the wave is the only time you want to throw your Q when you're setting up a freeze. So that's when you push and went to freeze. So once you understand that, then trust me, you'll be, gang you you'll be getting ganked a lot less, and you'll be getting a lot more CS, and you'll be winning a lot more lanes if you understand that. Now lastly, when to fight. So when to fighting depends on obviously the matchup, uh, like I said before, I'll be making a lot of matchup. I already have some matchup videos, but now that I'm a lot better of a player, I'll be making even better newer ones. So stay, stick around for that. But generally speaking, if you're virtually like a mage, like Ari, Lux, Zerath, those type of champions, even though they're like 
if you jump on them, you, you're supposed to jump on them, but the problem is early game, you don't do that much damage and they have a lot of CC and, and a lot of damage too. So you don't wanna actually fight them early. What you wanna do is, like I said, you wanna freeze it and then maybe set up a jungle gank. If not that, then you could for freeze the wave for a little bit, get some XP, get some CS, then hard push the wave because when you're freezing, you're building up more and more minions on your side. And then you hard push the wave and you get an early back. So you come back to lane with an extra item while the enemy mid laner is farming the wave you just pushed at them. So that's like combining freezing and combining pushing to back. It's, they help you survive lane so easily. So you don't want to fight chant like mages, like Ari and all that stuff early game. Once you get like revolver and stuff, then you can start out damaging their entire combos early game. But if you're versing someone like Kassadin, you don't have a choice. You have to fight Kassadin before level six. So the entire games from level one, you're pretty much fighting Kassadin. So it really depends on the matchup. Um, some matchups are unwinnable. Like say Kassadin gets to like level seven, level eight with Rod of Ages and stuff, you know, Catalyst. You can't fight him anymore. There's no reason to stay in the lane. So that's when you AFK perma push and just roam. So laning really depends on the, on the matchup. It really depends on knowing the enemy champion's weaknesses and strengths. Like, you're not going to go and fight a Talon level 2. That's something you just have to learn and know. But don't worry, we'll be doing a lot of matchup guides in the future. And, yeah, just, you can watch streams and VODs that I do, or any other person that plays like with Lunar matchups. But the big important thing about matchups is it's okay to die for one for one. What does that mean? Dying one for one is when you kill the enemy mid laner, and he basically he kills you too, so you both die. This is fine because you're an assassin and you scale, but the best time to die one, of the, one for one in a lane is when you push the wave. So usually the scenario is you freeze the wave, you trade, you build up a big minion wave. So say you have 10 minions now because you froze the wave and you started you know, killing enemy minions, you started trading, and now you want to like, the, the enemy mid laner is low enough to kill. So you build up, you build up this giant 10 minion minion wave, then you hard push. And now that 10, those 10 minions are, are at the enemy mid laner's tower. And that's when you just dive him. That's step four, you die. You be pushed to dive and you dive him under tower in the early game and you both die, right? So you got one kill, he got one kill, but he just loses, he's now he loses like 10 minions, which is a worth one for one because he just lost like 150 golden minions and a lot, a lot of XP. So you actually, you actually benefited a lot more. So that's when you would die one for one. It's really good to die one for one when you have a giant minion wave crashing onto the enemy tower. So those are just basic laning um, principles that I wanted to share with you guys. And like I said, I'll be having videos on all of this in the future. So let's get into the mid game. All right, so let's talk about out of lane, like mid game, late game, all that stuff. Basically, there's only two things you do out of lane and that's either split pushing or grouping and team fighting, which would be like for objectives and stuff. Um, there's nothing much, you don't want to be AFK, ARAM mid, that's why splitting is, just, you have to split. If you AFK, ARAM mid and ARAM, then you're just sharing XP, you're, you're just becoming, you're making yourself weaker. When you're in a side lane, you get solo XP, you get solo CS, you apply pressure to towers, apply pressure on the map, force enemy team to come try to fight you. Echo's really good at side laning because Echo can fight a lot of champions. Especially if you have TP, you just flip push the entire game and TP to a fight. If they, don't, if they don't send anybody to you, tell your team not to die mid lane. I'm split, I'm split pushing and you start getting all the enemy towers. Um, the only time you really can split push, like if the enemy team has like an Aurelia or Fiora, then you really can't split push because you know you lose the 1v1. If you lose the 1v1, don't even try to split push. What you have to do is try to just win a team fight. Because if you try to side lane versus a Fiora, then you're just gonna lose 1v1 and then your team's gonna lose the game. You have a better chance of just pushing the side wave and then just coming back mid and team fighting. So that's pretty much split putting pretty self-explanatory. Side lane, push, get towers, and then TP to a fight or push the wave to a tower, then roam back to the team and have a fight or whatever. Team fighting though. So team fighting is when you're grouped with your team for, you know, to fight in, in, in a ram or for an objective bear and dragon, any of that stuff. Team fighting is really hard with Echo because it requires you to hit your W correctly. It requires you to go for the right targets and it requires you to just to know what, you just have to know what the right thing to do is because if you mess up and you waste your R, 
kind of sucks. If you miss your W, kind of sucks, and then you become a lot, lot more useless. So let's go. Let's go. Uh, give you guys an example team fight from one of my season 10 ranked games. So now I'm gonna go over a team fight in game to basically give you guys an example of what to do in a team fight. Obviously every team fight is different. Obviously every team fight is different. Every team fight has a different like situation, but I'll give you a basic, a basic thought process on how to think and how to use your abilities when you're playing Echo in a team fight. Like this is one example, you can have thousands and thousands of variations, but let's get into this example. So here, this is late game. We're going for just an Elder Dragon up, so the entire enemy team is here, right? Their Fiora is trolling, going into my entire team. So Fiora, Fiora's an int, but you know, Fiora players, what can I say? Let me put up the scoreboard, and you see the scoreboard. I'm four, two, and 10. My team is pretty good now. We were losing this game early, but then we came back into the game. Look, the enemy team has all the dragons, but then we came back from team fighting. So now let's look at the situation. I'm running, me and Lee Sin are here, right? So we're outside, this is, right now this is like a 3v. If you think, oh, it's basically a 3v4 right now, but Fiora's trying to be a hero, which is wrong, but hey, 0 and 3, I guess. But anyway, let's continue. So here Fiora dies. She, she could have, this could have been so deadly, but here, Fiora dies, right? And now I'm over here. What do you do now? So I see everybody, we have a ward. Uh, I'm pretty sure we see, let me see. Yeah, we have vision on Zaya. We have vision on Syndra. We have vision on Olaf. We have vision on Leona. So we see the entire enemy team. So playing the game, we know this, right? Leona is trying to be another hero, trying to get these last hits over here, get these kills. And then we have the two powerhouses right here and then the front line, right? So we want this one and we want this one, right? We want to kill these two. These are who we want. So now my Leeson's here. My Leeson is trying to go onto the Olaf. So I throw my W now. Where am I throwing my W? I'm throwing my W right here. Why? Because first of all, Olaf's right here. And also this W will, will separate these two from these two. So I'm basically splitting them. So here, I throw my W through right here. Because I'm assuming that so based on the, where they are, they're they're running this way. They, they wanna they wanna help this Leona get all these low HP targets. So I throw my W in a spot where their only chance to go is right here. So this way now Zaya can't go into here and Syndra can't go into here. Olaf could cause Olaf, you know, click R, but still I'm splitting, I'm splitting them up. So now look. Now who do I jump on? Do I jump on Olaf? Because Olaf's gonna run to my least to my least sin. Right? Or do I jump on the AD carry? Some people may jump on Olaf, which is wrong. The only person you want to kill is this person and then Syndra, whoever's over here. I don't really know what's going on here. It doesn't really matter. We're, we're right here. So now we're going. Now I do my animation cancel. Proto belt. Boom. And just like that, look what just happened. Just like that, I took the AD carry out of the game. Now Olaf and Syndra and Zaya are all looking at me from that one play because I split them over. I threw my a really good W. Basically, Echo team fighting is all about throwing your W in a good spot as your main team fighting source, and then attacking the squishies. So now she's almost out of the fight. She's still stunned. My least in I don't know what this is. He trolled, but now Olaf just uses R to get me because he was gonna get stunned. So he panicked, clicked R. Syndra wants to kill me. Olaf wants to kill me. Zaya trying to run for her life. And I, what did that just do? The entire main team just ran at me, right? They ran at me this way. And now guess what? They're like, uh-oh, Echo's over here. Echo could kill us, but now what happened? My entire team is now here. Now they're now they're pincer maneuvered. We, we trapped them. And now guess what? Look, Olaf ran at me. Where's Olaf? Olaf is over here. If Olaf is full HP, runs into my team, he could actually kill Caitlyn. He could kill my gangplank. He could kill my entire team, actually, but we forced him to fight us. And then we ult back. Now we're actually in front of Olaf, and now guess what? There's no protection for Syndra and Zaya, and just like that, we throw Q, E, animation cancel, boom. And just like that, we kill the enemy carries in a team fight. And now we get Elder Dragon. So obviously that, that wasn't the craziest of fights because the seasons erased all my match history. This is from season 10. 
But just so you know, when you're team fighting with Echo, always gotta think about smartly where you wanna throw your W to their stun or to zone. You gotta pick your targets correctly. So there's a lot of things that go on in team fight. Like I said, we'll have a lot of videos in the future talking about team fighting in general. Well guys, there you have it. That was the Season 10 Echo Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.